Hello there Pisces, welcome to your April 2018 tarot reading. So um, I trust that many of you have had a really good uh, birthday celebration and uh, I hope that you know you're getting back into the, into the swing of things because I feel like April is going to be a really good month for you guys. Um, there are some things that you kind of need to overcome, some challenges that you need to overcome, but overall it's a really good month for you to try to, you know, lay down that blueprint for yourself and try to figure out the next step in your professional evolution in your um, relationship sector as well, okay? So I'm going to relay four big messages for you guys that came out in this spread. And then we're going to go into these messages one by one and try to unpack them and see which areas they are affecting your circumstances for uh, the month of April. So the first message that I have here is uh, they say, say it loud and proud. So this is kind of like a month for us to be a little bit more boastful about our achievements, our capabilities, our potential. It's not a month for you to kind of like, you know, work behind the scenes, shy away from the limelight, and, and feel insecure about what you know when other people are asking you or soliciting you for, for information. This is a month to say it loud and proud. The second message that I have here is educational sore spot hinders achievements. And this is something that you are going to be dealing with for this month or in the past. You might have been passed over for promotions and things like that, mainly because of what are perceived to be educational sore, spot, sore spots. They could be real or they could be perceived, okay? So things about yourself that that no one else thinks about but you do. So they could be real or they could be perceived. They could be, you know, just uh, illusions. But either way, these are things that you need to overcome because they are affecting your, I want to say, your performance and also your uh, the way people see you in the work environment, in your professional sector. The third message here is uh, beware of dubious dealings. And I feel like this is something that has happened since February and uh, it's coming back now and you're trying to fix them. Fourth and final message here is gatekeeper of secrets. Now, this message came out in the, um, the, the card of the high priestess. And whenever I think of Piscean people, I always see the high priestess. People that know a lot, that have a lot of uh, other people coming to them in confidence, telling them things um, that shouldn't be repeated. So you are kind of like that reservoir uh, where people kind of dump their secrets. And in essence, you're the gatekeeper of secrets. But I feel like there are things here that you're not aware of. And you're not really aware of why it's happening. And I can um, explain a little bit. Uh, about that for you in a little bit, okay? So, um, the first thing that I want to talk about here, um, say it loud and proud. You show up here as the Queen of Cups in the reverse position, and you can be male or female watching this. The Queen of Cups in the reverse is um, sort of like tired of having people take advantage of you, tired of doing so much for other people and not getting that thanks, that reciprocity, and that recognition that you deserve and tired of people not operating um, in a direct, frank, honest, and truthful manner when they are dealing with you or when they're dealing with other people. And then tired of, you know, the, um, I want to say like the human condition. You know, like how can we all band together and just get along and not have to um, emphasize or argue over our differences. So I feel like you're just tired of all these things, being bogged down with all of these things. What I am feeling overall is um, many of you, um, the environment that you grew up in, I feel like people were just uh, very inconsistent, okay? So could be mom or dad, could be siblings, whoever it was that raised you, the environment itself, it seemed to me like... Um, it seems like, you know, different extremes. You might have been in a household where people follow things to the T. They were very dogmatic when it comes to their opinion, when it comes to their political, ideological, religious beliefs. And there wasn't really a um, 
a path to follow. It was just, you know, dogma, doctrine. And they didn't really think for themselves. And they told you what you had to do. And you're not really making that connection be between what you had to do and exactly why you had to do those things. So you just did it. You just obeyed. And then for others, it's like growing up in a household where people were very, very inconsistent. And uh, they say one thing and do another. They preach one thing and then they, they kind of hold that in uh, themselves to like a higher standards or double standards. And they don't really practice what they t preach. And so you're getting a lot of conflicting information. And you're also getting a lot of um, kind of like two-sided messages. Okay. And life, morality, and just what's right and what's wrong and what's expected of me expectations became very, very confusing. And so this message here, say it loud and proud, has a lot more to do with you, who you are, and what you're trying to do, and what you really believe in, independent of all of those inconsistencies around you. If you are aware that people around you are inconsistent in whatever capacity, they could be hypocritical, they could just be... Um, you know, they preach one thing, but then they make allowances for themselves. Hypocritical. Or they're not strong enough to really uh, adhere to the things that they preach because it's difficult, right? So whatever the circumstances and the people around you, you also need to understand that that is applicable to the way that they live their lives, but it's not really applicable to you, nor is it appropriate for you. And so you kind of need to find out, you know, what is appropriate for you? What is it that you're, you're needing to do? And so I see a lot of Piscean people kind of going through life, very muddled, uh, lacking a definite sense of direction, lacking a definite sense of, you know, what do I really believe in? Where do I draw the line? And what will I not or am willing to tolerate? So I feel this energy coming through where you're just trying to feel things out. And you're not really sure what's really right and what's really wrong. So it's that sense of, you know, dubious morality, dubious like dealings. And you do make a lot of allowances for other people because you understand that, you know, we are all um, just trying to do our best. And so what comes out as a result of that is you're not really sure where you stand. You're not really sure if everything that you've known is really, really true or if it's just something that, you know, you, you grew up being exposed to, it's indoctrinated, and you just believe it as real when it doesn't really uh, merit the belief or it doesn't really um, stand the test of time. So I feel like you're dealing with some... You're, you're dealing with that lack of, you know, what is really appropriate for me. And so you're on your path trying to find something that you believe in, trying to find that group, that, that ideology that really fits into your lifestyle. And then when you find it, you kind of need to own it, you kind of need to proclaim it, and you kind of need to just adhere to it. Okay, so don't be afraid of whatever it is that you believe in. Don't be afraid of whatever it is that you feel is right for you. You need to own it and you need to, you know, be um, vocal about it. I'm sensing some people that, you know, believe in like esoteric teaching, like astrology, numerology, um, even palmistry, even like tarot readings, for example. But you kind of hide that part of yourself. You, you feel like, no, other people aren't really going to accept me. But at the same time, you want to expose it because you want to find a community or people who are like-minded, but you're afraid. So it, it kind of takes the back seat. You never really talk about it. And then, then in time, it, it kind of, um, it's, it's like on the back burner. And then for others, you might have really strong, you know, religious, political, whatever, beliefs. And you're very subtle about it. And so you don't really tell people how you feel. You don't really preach it. You don't become, you know, politically or religiously or whatever, active. Or you don't become that advocate. And then over time, people ask you, how do you feel about this? You kind of shy away from those big 
divisive or even big political debates. And so own it, own it, don't be, don't run away from it. It's going to allow you to find people that are like-minded. And if it is something that you believe in, don't shy away from it. Own it, express it, and especially live it, okay? Once you start to do that, you're going to find yourself a lot happier, a lot freer. And you're going to find yourself in a position where you're going to be in alignment to find people or community of people that are similarly minded, to find a community of people that are like you, just as passionate about the same things, just as, um, I, I almost want to say, like, um, that have the same aspirations, the same dreams, and, you know, they have the same goals as you. So the way for you to find yourself and to find that group and to find that community of people is to own up to the things that you believe, advocate for them, and say it, you know, loud and proud, okay? The second message here, educational sore spot hinders achievement. Um, many of you, what I have here is the two of wands, and the two of wands is kind of thinking about what's next, What's the next step that I need to take? What else is out there for me? I've been doing this for a long time. What else is out there? And the Two of Wands is a really beautiful card, but it also uh, points to me a little bit of fear, trepidation, um, not willing to take that first step, not like the fool where you take this blind leap of faith and hope everything is going to be okay. The Two of Wands deals with wanting to plan things out, not jumping into things and being a little bit careful and cautious and wanting to have somebody familiar to kind of um, venture into this next phase of your life with you. So it's like fear of doing the next thing on our own. And I feel like that's where many of you are at right now. I'm feeling many of you are thinking about a career change, okay? And uh, you're thinking where I'm headed right now. Some of you are hindered mainly because everyone else, let's say they have a master's degree and they have a, a, a PhD, uh, a doctorate degree, and you might only have a bachelor's degree. And you're just like, if I want to advance a little bit more, I'm going to need to go back to school. And uh, or some of you are just like, <clears throat> my income generating capabilities is maxed out. They're not going to hire me without that advanced degree under my belt. So what can I do? Should I switch direction? Should I change, uh, you know, switch gears and go into a different path altogether? Or should I think about my career development? And, um, you know, every time we go back to school, it's a big trade-off, right? Because it's about uh, leaving uh, school, what, like higher education. It would take like four for a bachelor's and then two years for a master's degree. If you're doing it part-time, then it takes a little bit longer. So you're kind of... Um, making that calculus and you're trying to think about the trade-offs, you know, two or four years of foregoing really good earnings in order to go back to school or having to suffer through school, doing it part-time and not having the time to yourself and not having the time to, you know, for leisure activities or not having the time to take care of everything that you need to take care of, children, family members, uh, your significant other and so forth. So, for many of you, it's a very difficult decision. It's a big trade-off. Um, I would advise that you do it because investing in yourself, it's always a good decision. And if you think of education as a huge investment in ourselves, that's the way we have to look at it. It's Yes, it can propel you to that next step in your professional life where you get paid more, where your doors will open for you when it comes to promotion. Yes, you have all of these things. But ultimately, education is an investment. And the reason why you might not have taken this route is because you feel like I can, you know, um, I can learn through unorthodox ways. Like, you know, I can learn through life. I can learn through uh, working. I don't need to go back to school, but I feel like where things are set up for you guys professionally, school, additional uh, schooling, additional education is going to be required. And um, going back to school, if you've been thinking about this, mulling this over for quite some time, 
I feel that you need to stop dithering and you need to just do it, okay? Um, so big discussions are coming here in your professional life. And I feel like for many of you, there are people advancing, people that are new in the organization. They're advancing. And I also feel many of you are keeping in touch with um, your peers through social media. Um, and you're seeing them progress professionally in their career. And you're seeing that, you know, a few years ago they went to school. They disappear. They just disappear off the face of the earth, off social media. And all of a sudden they've got their degree. And now they're like in a really good position. And I feel like that's becoming uh, a big motivation for you. And it's there for a reason. I do think things happen for a reason. So really think about that. Others of you have already reached that, that zenith. So it's like you're at the top of that mountain. And you're trying to figure out what's next. What's next for me? Do I want to stay here? Or do I want to go abroad? So I feel like... You're staying here. The reason why you're staying here and you're not really uh, pushing yourself to go abroad or pushing yourself for something new is because you have all of these, I want to say, um, earthly belongings, earthly possessions. So the message I'm hearing here is part ways with your earthly possessions, homes, mortgage, um, car payments, you know, like all these little things. Well, they're, they're not little. In the greater scheme of things, they are small, but where you are right now, these are things that you have spent a lot of time building up, okay? So they're not just frivolous things, um, but I also feel many of you are really good, um, are really into collecting antiques, collecting like beautiful, you know, artwork, and, and uh, I'm seeing like big picture frames. I'm seeing many people doing a lot of art, like collecting paint, but I do see a lot of paint. And it's like paint palettes or makeup palettes, but there's a lot of it, brushes and things like that. And those things are expensive. And if you were to leave them behind, it would take you years to accumulate the same amount. And so you have all of these earthly belongings, earthly possessions that are really weighing you down more than anything. And I know that you're aware of it, but it's really hard for you to, you know, Think about them not being in your life, mainly because they're recreational things that you can fall back on. And they took a really long time to accumulate, so you're not ready for that process. But I definitely feel you're being bogged down with a lot of material things. And it is time for you to kind of sort through and figure out exactly why that's, that's there and whether or not, you know... Um, whether or not they're really hindering your ability to be mobile, your ability to come and go as you please, your freedom of movement overall. My rule of thumb overall when it comes to things around the house, if you haven't touched it in three months, throw it out, donate it, whatever it is, okay? When it comes to clothing and if you live in a more seasonal like um, location where you have summers and winters, if you haven't touched it in six months, donate it, throw it out. So that's my rule of thumb to a more minimalist lifestyle. You're going to find yourself a lot more happy, okay? Um, so others of you, you have the education, you have the uh, credentials, but I definitely feel like a severe lack of self-esteem. And um, with the Queen of Cups in the reverse, it's almost like um, feeling overshadowed or feeling overpowered in some way as a, a child so that means you know you might have had siblings that overshadowed you you lived in their shadows you and it's it's inadvertent it could be deliberate or inadvertent but there you always think of yourself as like oh they're a lot smarter than me they're a lot more successful they have you know beautiful children they have a beautiful house they make more money than me so that's your personal hang-up Okay, and you kind of need to release that. And then for others of you, uh, feeling overpowered as a child, having parents that imposed a lot of expectations on you, and they were so perfectionistic that you felt like everything you did was not good enough. And so that is, that can also be, you know, very traumatic. And so you become an adult where you speak in a way that is very meek, 
that is very、um, evasive because you don't want to be judged. You don't want to、um, to deal with criticism, and so speak up for yourselves. Proclaim things loud and proud, and own up to your own ideas and own up to you know just how intelligent you are. Okay, and this month. There will be opportunities for you to kind of、um, get involved, get your hands dirty, do things. Whether it be a more of the creative、uh, nature or a little bit more, you know, technical. Whatever it is, you're going to have an opportunity to shine in your work environment, and then you're going to start to see this whole time that you've been hanging, you, you've you've got these hangups that you needed to get rid of, and so you're going to start to shine. People will start to see you. As、uh, a force to be reckoned with, and they're going to start to see how intelligent you are, how capable you are, and the whole time I feel like you were hiding this part of yourself. So you have an emergence here, and I also feel for many of you, you're getting your first wave of support through love relationships. Either it's like a new relationship where someone is just like, "Hey, you're actually really good at this. You should do this more." They're giving you that encouragement. They're giving you that love and that support, and because of that, you're able to kind of、uh, believe in the things that、um, that they're saying that's really great about you. Okay, so it's like gaining in self confidence again. So, third message here: beware of dubious dealings. There's something going on here in your work situation where I feel almost like. Many of you are dealing with really、um, sketchy environments. Somebody is telling you, you know, I did this, I committed this, I committed fraud, I got involved in all of these things, and you just annotate it, but you can't really expose it. So it could be like confidentiality agreements between you and a client. If you're like a social worker, a therapist, even a、uh, a paralegal assist, like. A paralegal or even a lawyer. Okay, so for those of you in the legal profession or in the humanitarian profession, someone is telling you a lot of shady things that they have done or that have been done to them. You're annotating everything. You're documenting everything, but you're not really、uh, divulging information. So I feel like confidentiality. And then for others, I feel like there have been some shady financial dealings, things like done in the darkness of the night,、um, people getting paid under the, under the table, and things like that. So discussions regarding these issues, discussions about what I'm seeing here is、um, it's the five of cups, and then the deck that I'm using says Mars in Scorpio. Mars in Scorpio basically deals with. Mars deals with action. Scorpio is a very, very underhanded, but it's also like below the surface. Okay, so it it seems to me like dealings that are below the surface, dealings that are a little bit shady, a little bit sketchy, or things that are done in a way where you're not really sure what exactly happened, who's involved. And so many of you might be doing some investigation, some digging into some transactions. Many of you are following the trail of the like the breadcrumbs to see where it leads you. Many of you are sifting through financial transactions to figure out what exactly happened. And it is also tax season in the United States here on、um, in April. So that's what I feel is happening here as well. You're sorting things out. Um, I don't see there are you know bad things that come as a result of this, but I definitely feel you want to cover your bases. In the career sector, I do see here、um, opportunities, discussions when it comes to like promotions, discussions when it comes to、um, getting a little bit of a pay increase. So I feel like that's available for you. But once again, the the superiors might be looking at your. Your level of involvement, how your leadership capabilities, and so don't be meek. Okay, make yourself stand out, make yourself loud, and make yourself、um, let yourself be heard this month, and that's going to bode well for you when it comes to you know the the promotions. Last message here, gatekeeper of secrets. So this is the high priestess, 
and I really like this message for you guys, mainly because、um, Piscean people are just very. I want to say like it, you're like a tulip. You're very very、um, elegant, but you also have you know really really strong reserves of inner strength. And you know the the tulip it springs up in the、uh, springtime and it lies dormant in the winter. It's able to survive the frost. It's able to be very self contained, and、uh, it, it it deals with you know. Being able to kind of like slip be- below the radar and let other people shine, so not stealing the limelight from other people, allowing other people to live and let live. So I feel like you have this really quiet reserve of inner strength about you that is very understated, and that is you know you you're not boastful about it either. And I also feel many people you you have this non-judgmental way about you. Where you put people at ease, people come to you, and they can bear their deepest, darkest secrets without feeling like you're judging them. Okay, and so you you are privy to a lot of、um, confidential information. You are privy to、um, just a lot of secrets, and I also feel because you know the your your instinct is. Whatever you tell me stays in this room. I'm not going to expose it to anybody. I'm never going to, you know, betray your trust. So you can trust me with it. And so it's like a a, a one way street. It goes in. You shut the door, and the secret just never, ever, ever, ever gets out. And so the way that I'm looking at this is, a lot of us we learn through trial and error. We learn through mistakes, right? And then others of us are a little bit、um, more crafty. We learn by watching the mistakes of other people, and we learn what not to do. And so the fact that I feel many of you, you learn a lot through trial and error. And when you are emotionally compelled to do something, because emotionally you're worked up or you're invested in it, reason and logic tells you, no, 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 not a good idea. Because you're emotionally compelled to do it, you're going to do it anyways. And so, what I'm getting at here is, a lot of people are telling you their deepest, darkest secrets. They're telling you things that they have done, and they're also telling you about the consequences. So, the smarter way for you to operate on this high priestess, gatekeeper of secrets, analogy, is learn from other people's mistakes. You don't need to repeat their mistakes. You are privy to a lot of information, and you are exposed to th- these snippets of information for a reason, so that you can learn without having to, you know, get your your yourself hurt, get yourself in danger, without having to do a test run or a try run just to prove to yourself, okay, that doesn't work. So let me just not do that in the future. We have to be a little bit smarter about the insights. And the epiphanies that we get, we have to be smarter about how we use information, how we get information to work for us. Okay, and at the same time, we need to be careful to kind of hold ourselves to high standards because we are privy to a lot of personal information. So what you do ultimately matters. Aim to be. I want to say. Aim to be the person that can be entrusted with these, you know, secrets. Okay, so the message here about dubious dealings and secrets come come out together. So I feel like they they go hand in hand. Can we sell these secrets to better ourselves? Probably not, and you you know that as well. Um, so don't be blinded, okay, by these opportunities. I feel like it's really important for us to keep mum and to basically、um, perform the duties that we are entrusted. All right, because、uh, confidence once it is betrayed, we can never earn it back. Okay, so trust and, and confidence once it's betrayed, we can never earn it back. So、um, Pisces, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. 
um, I feel, well, actually one last message, last message, and this is going to be in your relationship sector. I feel like many of you are starting on a new path here when it comes to relationships. And so it's really important for you, you know, once again, learn from the past. Don't get bogged down with relationship partners that don't really appreciate you and kind of own up to how you feel, what you need, you know, proclaim these things. And if the other person doesn't deliver, that's when you know it's time for you to go, okay? Um, I feel like we have here the judgment card. So it basically points to new beginnings, new people, a new path that is in store for you. I feel like many of you are contemplating the next big move. But once again, there's that fear of, do I want to do this alone or do I need another person? And if you find yourself really compelled to take a specific path, and your relationship partner is not really on the same page with you. I feel like that might not be the right person for you. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I wish you all the best and um, take care of yourself, okay? And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.